Well, thank you for being here today for this session on health and medicine. And I um, want to introduce, there's uh, two wonderful people that will be presenting. We're going to start off first by introducing uh, Vernon Grant. Come on in, Dr. Vernon Grant. Hello. And I'm going to leave because I'm a lot shorter. <laughs> <laughs> How's it going, guys? Good. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, you guys are the half class, huh? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to kind of talk to you guys a little bit. You guys are all seniors? No. Tenth grade and up. Tenth grade and up. How many of you guys are going to go to college? Almost everyone. Right on. <laughs> Everybody's kind of. That's good. That's good. Uh, and, and that's what I'm going to talk about real briefly here. I'm going to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about my uh, journey through academia. And then I got a, I got a, some trivia for you guys. And I'm going to split you guys into a couple of different groups. Is that cool? Think you guys can handle yeah. it? <laughs> you guys can do it, huh? Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, I come from where you guys come from. And, uh, uh, and Wolf Point is down the other way. How you doing? I am doing fine, thank you. Good, good. So, um, like I said, I come from where you guys come from. I went to high school in the other high school, uh, in the old high school. I think it's uh, elementary school now, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, these are my grandfather's. Oh man, I'm probably going to get out of the way. Fred Grant is on the right. And. <laughs> And John Eagle Ribs is on the left. He's chief of the Siksika, one of our bands of the Blackfoot Confederacy. And, you know, you guys, the reason I ask you guys if you're going to college is because I, I dropped out of, out of high school and when I was a junior. I played varsity ball for Browning. Conference recording has started. Sorry, guys. That's okay. <laughs> I played varsity ball for Browning in 98, but then that spring I, I dropped out for just a lot of different reasons. But, uh, you know, I hung out on the res and, and, and did some stuff, but uh, I got my GED in uh, 2001 and I start working. <clears throat> and then in 2003, I went to BCC. How many of you guys are going to start at BCC? That's good. BCC is good. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a really good start. It, it uh, you know, really helps you to learn the process of, of academia. You know, and it also really taps into the, the cultural and traditional aspects of our people. It's, it was a really good uh, place for me to start my, my education. And then I uh, transferred to the University of Montana. I'm going to move right in the middle here. In 2005, up there in the corner with uh, Monty, that's my nephew Josiah. Some of you guys may, may not know him. Do you guys know Josiah? We yeah. have Josiah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, so, so check this out. I, I went to about, I was probably went to about 30 Montana, University of Montana football games. Never once did I see Monty. I brought him to his first one and Monty came right up and, and, and gave him a big old hug. That's my brother there in the back. But anyway, so I got my bachelor's degree in 2008 in health enhancement so I actually have a teaching certification K through 12 and then I got my master's in 2010 in exercise science and that's really a more lab based science and I didn't really want to do that my focus and my interest was in obesity and diabetes in, in Indian populations and so when I went into my doctorate I, I focused on that and I actually got my doctoral work was is actually interdisciplinary and what that means is that there's two different uh, disciplines that I combined to create my program which was community health and exercise science and so um, and I could talk more to that if you guys want but now what I'm doing is I'm a postdoc and what that means is I'm basically funded to continue doing research and, and working and writing at the University of Wisconsin and uh, <clears throat> I'm in the Department of Family Medicine and Community Health and and basically what I do is I just do research right now we're doing a, a 
nationwide obesity intervention in five tribal communities. One of them is back home in Browning. But I'm also a, a faculty affiliate at the University of Montana in the Department of Health and Human Performance, and that's why I'm, I'm here. Uh, it's a long story why I'm still in Missoula, but I actually go out to actually go out to uh, Madison, in Wisconsin, about two, three times a year. I'm going out actually next month. So with that, I just kind of wanted to just real briefly tell you guys, you know, what I'm about, my my journey. I didn't really give you too much information, but uh, I just wanted to give you guys some time if you wanted to ask any questions. Don't be shy. Don't everybody go all at once now. <laughs> How'd you pay for your education? How did I what? How'd you pay for your education? How did I pay for my education? That's a good question. So by treaty, Indian people in the state of Montana get what's called the Native American fee waiver. And what that what that means is that our tuition is is paid for, but everything else isn't. So you got to pay for books, you got to pay for uh, you know the cost of living, you got to pay for food, gas, whatever. And as an undergrad, I, I had to work. So I basically worked all the way through um, as an undergraduate. I, I started in what's called Bridges to the Baccalaureate. And I started doing research when I was uh, when I was an undergraduate. What, what was that? Did you say something? No. No. Oh, okay. All right. Sorry. I thought I thought you <laughs> said something. Oh, but anyway, so so I started doing research actually when I was an undergrad, and I and I got in with this lab, and I was I was research doing research with honeybees of all of all disciplines. So I worked with this lab for like uh, actually four years until my master's degree and then I continued uh, coordinating the program called Bridges to the Baccalaureate for a couple of years but then into my doctorate I applied for funding and I got two different fellowships <clears throat> and also all the way throughout my undergraduate I applied for scholarships and there's lots and lots of money out there for for Indian people you just gotta apply for it. Any other questions? No? Okay, so so like I said, I got some I got some exercise trivia for you guys. Since you guys are how, this is perfect. And so I want to split you guys into two two groups can you guys do that so can you guys it's gonna be four against three so just split right there on the table <laughs> okay so the team with three people, you guys are team one, all right? And then a team with four people, you guys are team two. <laughs> all right. So here's the rules, guys. I had I originally had this set up for uh, for two schools, but uh, this is for you guys here. Team one against team two, so. We're going to start with team one. Team one, you guys get the first question. Questions are worth different amount of points. You have 30 seconds to answer. If you miss your question, then the next team gets to, to try to answer it. And then I'll keep score. And, uh, and then the last question, it's like Jeopardy, man. You can wager the amount of points that you get. All right? And is the teacher who is the teacher gonna jump in and be on somebody's team? Uh, I'll observe right now. <laughs> All right. So, 
They're kind of hard. You think you guys could do it? <laughs> we can do it. We got it. All right. All right. Okay, here we go. First question. What are the four different intensities of physical activity? Team I one. Out, I'm a librarian, not the health teacher. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, this is important for you to know. <laughs> I'm gonna move back over here. You guys got a guess? Um, All right. <laughs> close, real close, actually. Okay, team two. You guys got? You guys got an answer? Oh, All right. You guys ready? Light, moderate, vigorous. Moderate to vigorous. So you said easy, oh medium, hard. Pretty close. <laughs> All right, team two, this one's for you guys. You ready? What is the Surgeon General's recommendation for daily physical activity? So how much exercise should you get every day? 30 minutes, at least. Close, real close. Team one. Uh, is it 20 minutes a day? <laughs> <laughs> 60 minutes. Whoa. 60 minutes of moderate <laughs> vigorous physical activity. <laughs> all right, I lost track. Who's who's next now? Is it team two? Team one. Team one. All right, up, I think. all right. Yep. Team one. Okay, ready. Can you describe an activity that would be considered moderate to vigorous? <laughs> 10 seconds. Okay, time. You guys got an answer? Sprinting. What is it? Sprinting. Yeah, I'll give you that. It's, it's open ended, so really anything. I mean, yeah, sprinting is. Yep. There you go. T1, five points. All right. All right, here we go. Team two, you could take the lead here. Ten points. What are the three different types of muscle? Come on, this is real basic anatomy. If you're health, man, you should know this. And I am not the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> this is all on you, teacher. <laughs> All right, time's up, team two. Do you got an answer? Me? No. Oh, cardiac. There's one. Primary. What is it? Primary. Primary? No. Yes. Your pecs. <laughs> that is a muscle. <laughs> But there's three different types. All right, T1, you guys want to give it a shot? Oh, tendon. That one was that one was kind of hard, but not really. Skeletal muscle. <laughs> smooth muscle. What you what smooth muscle? Uh, Tell me what smooth uh, muscle is. 
Bicep. No, nope, that's skeletal. Smooth muscles right here, your stomach. And then, oh. and then cardiac. What's cardiac muscle? Heart. Heart. All right, who's up? Team two? Four, five, team one. Team one? All right, team one. What? The muscles on your legs and arms are made up of what type of muscle? Out of the ones you just gave? Yeah. 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 I don't know. Is he skeletal? Correct. <laughs> All right, team one. There's ten points. Oh, come on, team two. You guys gotta get, get it going now, man. It's time to rally. All right, ten points. You guys could tie it up. What kind of muscle can you work out every day? Cardiac. Like... No, <laughs> that's a good guess. Smooth. Yeah. Really? <laughs> All right. All right. Back to team one. Five points. What is the main function of the cardiac muscle? And you got to be specific here. Correct. <laughs> Two months on fire, man. All right, guys. You could still tie it up, Team Two. <laughs> All right, there are three main types of resistance training. Name two. So, re resistance training is weight training. So, when you lift weights, there's two main types. What are they? Our three main types, name two, I mean. <laughs> Time. You got an answer, team two? What is it? Oh, I can't hear you for some reason. Try, try again. Can't hear you. Still can't hear you. Still can't hear us. I think we can hear circuits. Like circuits. Weight lifting in circuits. Okay. And speed. Speed and circuit. Speed and circuit. Ah, oh, those are those are close. So endurance, oh. their strength. What is strength? So low, uh, heavy weight, low rep. Increasing the weight. Endurance, low weight, high rep, and then health slash maintenance. We knew that. All right, <laughs> all right, team. What is it? Team one. I think it's team two. Team two. All right, team two. Here, this one. This one's just kind of a. Uh, uh, it kind of seems long, but it's actually pretty simple. Think about it. So a runner runs three miles every day, at a light intensity, which is really nice and easy at a, a pace about ten minutes per mile. So it takes this person about thirty minutes to finish three miles. Even though he's in great shape, he's not getting any faster. How can he? What can he do to get faster? Instead of running slow and easy every day, what can you do to get faster?
That one was ours. All right, so sprinting or like fart legs, we said. But but is that team's two answer? What does team two say? It was supposed to be us. Yeah. We still that was supposed to be really Okay, all right, so you guys' answer is sprinting? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Yes, we're going with sprinting. <laughs> okay, and this is team one, right? Yes. All right, that's correct. Whoa, they're at 30. Interval training. <laughs> Are you guys learning something? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, team two, right? Are we on team two? Yep. What are two benefits of aerobic and resistance training? Aerobic is running, biking, swimming. Resistance training is lifting weights. What are two yeah. benefits? This should be easy. Okay, what else? Improved. I, I missed it. What was it? Get healthy and, and your health improve? I think that's the same. <laughs> that, is, that's, yeah, that is the same. So, team one. Build your core. <laughs> okay. Improve your muscle mass. Okay. And uh, you can also become like it improves your mental health. Yeah, that's I, that is that are definitely two. And I only I said health, weight management, cardiorespiratory fitness, and increase your strength. So I'll give that one to you guys. <laughs> All right, team two, come on, right now, where are we? Team one, because team two had that one, so team one. So mode, frequency, duration, and intensity are key ingredients to any exercise regimen. Give me an example of what this would look like for an athlete over the course of one week. Now think about it. Think about what mode means. What frequency, duration, and intensity means. Okay, team one, you guys ready? Okay. Yeah. All right. So, what's the mode? What's the mode? What's the mode of, of training? Then you mix it up. You're not doing the same thing every day. Well, I mean, yeah, you could do that, but okay, so go ahead, tell me what you got. So, when you're like training, say, for track, okay. you do kind of an easy day, day one, and then you kind of build yourself up. Day, by the time like day three comes, you're doing all the hard work, day four, and then day five is kind of like a cool down, and you have a rest over the week. Okay, that's good, but you didn't give me the specifics. <laughs> Do you guys got specifics? So like day one is like more of a easy run, kind of distance more. The light kind of jog, getting yourself into it. And day two is more of uh, another little longer distance, but same. Three is like working on the track, sprinting, same for day four. 
Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say that's wrong. We're gonna go with team two. Team two. Okay, guys, we got to move on to the next question. We got to, uh, I'm going to have to switch up here, but this is what I'm looking for. Mode. I said boxing. It could have been anything. Frequency Monday through Friday, duration two hours, and intensity. <laughs> Actually, guys, we're going to have to switch, uh, switch out people here, but uh, so I had one final question for you. But there's the answer for it. So when you're when you're training really hard and you inhale, you're inhaling oxygen. When you exhale, you exhale carbon dioxide. So do you have any last thoughts or questions for me? What's the program that um, you've done some work with here in Browning? Uh, you said that there was a health initiative you're involved with here in town. Yeah, it's called Healthy Children, Strong Families. Have you guys heard of that? No. <laughs> it's focused on two to five year olds and their parents. <laughs> that, that could be why. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's focused on obesity, diabetes prevention. Okay, part of the diabetes program? Or, no, or no, this is through a... UW. It's a nationwide uh, obesity intervention. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you so much, Vernon. It was wonderful. Um, all right, so I want to introduce now to you Shelby Cole, who is a student with the pharmacy uh, school. Uh, thank you, Shelby. Come on in. Yay! Oh. <laughs> all right, this is Shelby. Um, oh, hold on. We are very, we're a lot shorter than Vernon, so there, <laughs> that was, there we go. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Shelby, for being here, and I'm going to turn it over. Yeah. Um, okay, so, oh, I got to use the clicker. You got to use the clicker. There you go. All right, so I just wanted to talk a little bit, kind of how I uh, ended up in pharmacy school, because that certainly isn't how I started off. So, there you go. So this is where I'm from. Um, I grew up on a ranch outside of Dodson, so that's like right off of the reservation down there. Um, so it's just, it's a really small town. See? Oh, here. So we can only see that one house, right? Ah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I just came from a really small town, didn't really know like a lot of science or even really what pharmacists were a lot. Um, and then ended up going to high school in Malta, which is still another small town. And then while I was in Malta, um, we had, I mean, in high school you had to take chemistry classes, right? So I ended up really liking chemistry, and so I started to think that that was maybe something I wanted to do, but I still really had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do with my life. Um, so right out of, oh, I forgot, this is my family. Um, so this is actually really important because, uh, my family were really kind of what got me to college and then what's kept me there. Um, so my mom, let's see if I can find her. No, oh. ha, my <laughs> mom, <laughs> uh, she has a master's degree and she's a special ed teacher. Um, she used to work in, actually she was in Browning for a while, I think. Yeah, like just like two years ago she was there. Um, what's her name? Oh, Susan Matovich. Does anybody have her? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so that's my mom, <laughs> um, and she always kind of told me I was going to college. It, it wasn't ever a question. I, I knew I was going to college. Um, I just wasn't sure what for yet. Um, and then, let me see, my grandma right here, she is an English teacher. She used to work at Harlem. Um, for years she worked there, uh, and if she knew that I put a picture of her in sweats, she would probably murder me. <laughs> yeah. Um, but she helped me actually write a lot of my college admission essays and then a lot of my scholarships she helped me write. Um, and then my dad and sister, they always are just, uh, they're really supportive about me going to school. 
they always want to know how I am, how it's going, and especially my grandma really wants me to get done, and she's really excited about it. Um, so it's important to kind of maybe like let your family know what you're thinking and then get their opinions and just see. And a lot of times like they're so excited for you to be doing all these different things and have all these different possibilities and they're really happy to help. So, okay, so this is fun. I don't know how to do this though. So. Okay, all right. Okay, so like I said, in high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and so I kind of just figured I'd go to the Great Falls College of Technology. Um, wait, that's me, little smiley face in Great Falls. <laughs> um, and I went to the College of Technology uh, to be uh, a radiology tech. So they like help you take, they take the x-rays and all that. Um, and then while I was there, I wanted to do something more challenging um, and wanted to do something a lot more impactful. So then I still not knowing what I was doing, <laughs> um, I went to Glendive. And so <laughs> the Dawson Community College there, I, I chose Glendive because it's a community college, so it's really cheap. Um, I didn't have to take out any student loans. I had school paid for. Um, I just worked, but that was just to pay for my food. I had everything else paid for, pretty much. And um, I got to take a lot of different classes to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, and so while I was there, I took a chemistry class and then a law school class. And um, so I went to Missoula. Here, let me see. Yay. I went to Missoula. Okay, because they had a law school there and they also had a really good um, chemistry teacher. He's like the toughest chemistry teacher in the world. It was ridiculously hard, but um, I learned a lot. And so after I took my chemistry class, I decided I wanted a career with chemistry in it, but also that I could help people. And so that was kind of an easy choice to pharmacy school. So then after Missoula, <laughs> uh, I moved to Bozeman uh, with my, I moved in with my dad and his family. He was working as a truck driver in the, like for the oil rigs. And so I moved in to help take care of my younger brother and sister. And I was there for a year and I ended up, let's see, ah, okay. <laughs> I ended up going back to Missoula because they had a pharmacy school program there. And while I was in Missoula, I really just fell in love with it. Um, it's, and being from such a small community, Missoula, and especially the pharmacy school, because it's a small program, you really get to know everybody, and so it really is like a community. I mean, it's a big town, but it has a small community feel, and so that's what I really liked about Missoula. Oh, and plus, the pharmacy school program in Missoula is two years less than a lot of other pharmacy school programs, and so you only go to school for six years instead of eight, so that was really appealing. Okay. So while I was there, I got to do, um, so part of the pharmacy school, they have a Native American Center of Excellence. And during the summer, they have kind of a, like a pre-pharmacy school thing. So you get to experience what pharmacy school is like. Um, and so in that program, they let us, we did a tour of Rocky Mountain Labs. So that's like this crazy suit over here. <laughs> um, this is all at Rocky Mountain Labs. And... It was super fun. It's one of the only labs like that in the country. They study like Ebola viruses and like all these really deadly bacteria. So that was really fun. Um, this is, yeah, <laughs> this is at the lab. That is really hard to do anything in that huge suit. You like don't know what you're doing the whole time. <laughs> um, and that's Native American Center of Excellence though. They are amazing. They. They pay for a lot of, um, I, get, I get free books, and I mean, one of the books I need for a pharmacy school class is just under $1,000, um, and that's just for one book, and I mean, I bet I need six books, and so I mean, that really adds up, and so I get free books through them. Um, yeah, they're just really good. Um, they're really helpful. They are always wanting to hear how their students are doing. They're really excited to talk to you, so they're the best. I absolutely love them there. And then also that summer, um, I went, I did the summer undergraduate research program and basically they pay you to do research. So let me see, there you go. Um, it was awesome. And then we got paid actually quite a bit of money. It was great. Um, and then we get to experience what it's like working in a lab. So this here, oh, it doesn't do my animations. Okay. But okay. Let me see. 
this picture, this is us. These are all the group of girls that were in that program. And then this, oh my gosh, this <laughs> right here is with my flow machine. Um, and so I'm wearing a lab coat, but we never actually ever wear labs and lab coats while we're in the lab. It's just for pictures. It looks nice. <laughs> um, so it's actually nice. We don't have to wear lab coats all the time. <laughs> um, and then we also got to do a lot of fun stuff. So we got to see, look at that big mammoth. That was fun. Um, and at the end with the grizzly statue on UM. Um, and so this was just a really great opportunity that I wouldn't have had if uh, I hadn't been at the University of Montana. Um, really, you, I mean, make sure that you talk, not only that you have a good advisor, but go and visit them a lot. Um, if I didn't have this advisor, I wouldn't have known about this opportunity. I wouldn't have applied and I wouldn't have got money to do research and have a bunch of fun. And this is how the program ended. So here, oh here, I'm gonna move out of the way. So this is us. We're on uh, the Swan River. We got to go kayaking at the end of the year. Through this program, we also got to do we got to do a lot of fun stuff. So we went to Glacier to go hiking. Um, we went to some of the um, hot springs in Idaho. We did a lot of fun stuff. So not only are you in the lab, you're out kind of in nature and which is what I really love about being in Missoula. Um, they're really about kind of the environment. So it's, yeah, it's really fun and it's really beautiful over here, obviously. So, oh, and I did this program. You can't really see it, um, but it was through the Center of Environmental Health Sciences. And that is only at the University of Montana um, in Montana. That's the only college that has it. So again, if I hadn't been in Missoula, I wouldn't have even known about that program really but and I was one of two students from Montana um, the other people were from New York Michigan and Massachusetts so, so this is where I work uh, I work in a lab and see we don't have to wear lab coats all the time um, this is our little fridge um, it keeps our cells warm and happy so it keeps them at um, like body temperature basically um, and this, what I'm working in, is a sterile hood to make sure bacteria doesn't grow in our cells. Um, in here. Okay, so this is a microscope. So a typical day in the lab, I'm growing up these cells, and we get our cells from mice. Um, so we actually get them in their long bones, so that's in their legs. That's where we get the cells from, and we grow them up, and we make them into immune cells. Um, you guys know what immune cells do, right? No? Okay. Um, no. <laughs> so they help you fight off infections, basically. Um, they help us protect us against diseases and bacteria or uh, like the flu. So we grow up different immune cells here. And then we have to look at them in the microscope to make sure that they're healthy and they're growing how they should be. Um, so then here's what a cell. So these are what the cells look like under the microscope. So these are just, this big one here is a macrophage, and it's just a different type of immune cell. And these little ones here are the ones that I actually study. Then here's another picture. So these are just, and then these are all healthy cells right here. And we just, like I said, check to make sure that they're growing how they should be. And then, okay, let me move. So this is me, I'm changing the media in my flask. So it's kind of like a fishbowl. You know, like you have to clean the fish bowl every once in a while, change out the water so the fish stay healthy. And it's kind of the same thing with these cells. So just having a good time <laughs> doing my job. And then like the next like two seconds later, I get really frustrated <laughs> because <laughs> uh, because it's not uh, a lot of the time. It's so frustrating. Like the, this pipette died in the middle of what I was doing. So I'd like stop everything, go redo it. But um, so actually what I really like about doing research is it's really challenging and it's really frustrating, but it's really fun when you get to overcome these challenges and you do it by yourself really. Um, so it's really, it's really fun. And also, uh, the people that are in research, um, they're all they're super smart, but they're all really nice and really like quirky. Um, like one of the scientists is in a rock band. <laughs> um, so like, they're all super fun. And I mean, I know a lot of the scientists, I mean, even like professors, they have tattoos, piercings, like they're all super laid back. And that's really nice coming from, I mean, like growing up around, I feel natives are, everybody is super laid back and not judgmental. And so it's very refreshing to be in such a welcoming atmosphere.
Okay, so this is our centrifuge machine. We put our cells in here, and I'm smiling like an idiot because <laughs> my friend who's taking the picture for me is making fun of me. <laughs> but we use this big, huge machine to basically spin down our cells into little tiny balls, and then once we get that, we put them in different kind of liquid, and we can look at them and test them with different chemicals. So part of my research is we look at immune cells' response to different uh, chemicals in the environment. So one of the chemicals I studied was in cigarette smoke and how cigarette smoke, smoke affects your body's ability to fight off infection. So, so like if you smoke, then if you get sick, like have pneumonia or a respiratory infection, it's a lot harder to, you, you stay sick longer and then it takes, you get even more sick too than a regular healthy person that didn't smoke. This is um, an example of the research that I do. Um, so I get to present stuff like this. I mean, it's really like a fancy science fair poster like that you guys do in high school, right? Um, it's just, I mean, it's a lot more work, but it's really fun to, um, so I actually went to, let me see if it's in here. Yeah, I got to go to New Orleans and present my research. And so when I was in New Orleans, I got to see penguins and a stingray. So <laughs> it was really fun. Um, and again, the Native American Center of Excellence, they paid for me to go. I didn't have to spend a single dime to do this. Um, I had to put in a lot of hard work, but once you show a lot of these people that you're a hard worker and you really want to do something, they kind of just throw money at you. And they're like, here, do this, do this, because they really want their students to do well. And they're really willing to help you any way they can. So. Yeah, this was super fun, by the way. These penguins are really cute. <laughs> so, okay, so then, no, let me see. When I'm not in the lab and at pharmacy school, I get to go on hikes and do this kind of stuff. Um, it's, be Missoula is beautiful. And actually on this hike, I was with a lot of the other grad students. Um, they're super fun. Like I said, we're, Missoula is a really small kind of community. And even for colleges, it's pretty small. And especially pharmacy school and then in the lab, you really get to know everybody. And so like a lot of all the grad students I work with, we're all friends. And so we all we do stuff like this together all the time. And here's another one. Yeah, this one's my favorite. Yeah, let me, so you can see it there. Beautiful Missoula. So, this is what I like about Missoula. You can be in the lab and then the next minute you can be out, like, I mean, in the wilderness from being in the city and it takes like... 10 minutes, so it's great, but um, do you guys have any questions for me about college? Um, even I've been to a bunch of different colleges, so it doesn't just have to be about Missoula. But thank you out. so much, Shelby, for yes. coming. Um, yeah. Thank you, Browning. Thank you. Thank you, thank thank you so you. much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sharon. Thank you for participating. And uh, we'll we see you guys maybe tomorrow at some other sessions. Thank you again, Shelby. And have a wonderful afternoon.